What is happening everybody? This is Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm and you can probably guess where I'm at today and that is in our fruit orchard. I've had so many of you guys reach out to me what's going on with the fruit or fruit orchard we haven't seen the fruit orchard can you show us a, a update on the fruit orchard and i'm listening to you guys i'm going to show you some good things that's happening over here in the fruit orchard and i'm also going to show you some bad things as well so y'all come on with me i must say guys overall i'm super happy with the fruit orchard it is growing so much from when we originally planted this thing a year and a half ago i think it's about a year and a half ago maybe two years ago but for the most part it's doing fabulously we actually have nine rows in the fruit orchard now if you guys remember last fall we started some more rows and i haven't really shown those rows at all and we'll get to that here in just a bit but for those that don't know this is our fruit orchard we have a pretty nice little size fruit orchard i believe or in my opinion and y'all i love this fruit orchard i'm loving the way it looks i'm loving the way it's turning out we're starting to get fruit and oh my gracious it's just it's just one of my most favorite spots here on the farm i just absolutely love it now my first row here are our pears and persimmons now we're growing two different types or two different classifications of pears and we're doing asian pears which is what you see here and we got european pears or which down on the end we're also growing asian persimmons and we're growing fuyu persimmons is the persimmon that we're growing but probably the first thing you guys noticed that maybe haven't seen our fruit orchard is this cable system we're growing a lot of our fruit trees and plants on a trellis system and for several several reasons number one reason that we're growing on this trellis system as you can see this asian pear right here is because of wind we have a lot of wind here we get some heavy wind here we have thunderstorms here that produce a lot of wind and the, what the trellis system is doing is that is helping us protect the fruit so if a windstorm were to come through here there's a good chance that i would lose about half my fruit from the wind damage but with this trellis system we got with this wire it really supports the trees in place and keeps from all that swaying and all that going on so that was one main reason that we're growing them on this trellis system also i'm growing them on this trellis system because of how easy it is to harvest fruit off this i got three wires here and they're pretty much two foot apart so the first one's two foot the second one's four foot and the third one is six foot this is the tallest my tree will get i will keep it pruned at this height forever so when i'm out here picking fruit i'm just going to reach over here and i'm going to pick fruit right here i don't have to worry about bringing out a ladder i don't have to worry about falling um i don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff because of the way it's growing here on this wire also what's a big advantage to this is because of the way we're pruning it and pruning it back it's still going to produce a ton of fruit and the fruit's going to usually be much larger because we're concentrating all of this energy just only on six branches because see if you look this first level is two foot and i got two side branches coming off my main trunk line down the center here so there's two side branches that come off at two foot two side branches that come off at four foot and two side branches that come off at six foot all the other branching side branching will be cut back i don't want anything but these six branches right here another big advantage of growing it this way is that i can spot an issue pretty darn quick so say if i had an insect damage here speaking of insects y'all i just noticed this fella I've got a praying mantis right here hey buddy glad you're here fella we sure do appreciate what you do sir or ma'am well that was pretty cool <laughs> but if i had insect damage or if i had a disease i could really spot it pretty quick and then maybe i could catch it in time and try to save the tree or try to eliminate the issue now if i had this big huge tree that had all these branches and limbs going on then it would be a lot harder to spot an issue 
Plus pruning it like this gives it so much air. So that also helps with diseases as well. So that is the reasons why we're growing them on this trellis system. Plus I think it looks pretty cool myself. Now this first row of nine in the fruit orchard are pears, persimmons, and pears. So we got Asian pears first. And then I got an empty spot. We're fixing to get into this. And then I got another Asian pear. Now, what happened here? Now, we talked about this in a video. And this particular pear got fire blight, which is a disease that is pretty prominent in our area, or in the southeast itself. Now, fire blight will attack pears and apples, I know. So it makes growing pears and apples in this region difficult. Now, this pear here is basically pretty much my fault. I made a mistake. I didn't spray at the right time. And typically the way that we get fire blight here is from insects because I had no fruit trees on this property pretty much besides a few native ones here and there. So what happens is, is that insect will go to a flower on your fruit tree and then it will contaminate that fruit tree with fire blight and then it'll just pass on down pass on down and it's very very fast and very very deadly to the fruit trees and i thought i caught this fire blight in time here but i didn't now the mistake i made was is that i didn't spray at the right time and i didn't spray enough with a fire blight spray or preventative my fruit trees are flowering at different times i got pears that flower at certain times i got apples that flower at certain times and i was i sprayed and then i'd wait a couple weeks and i sprayed again and that's not how i should have done it um i should have sprayed about every five days when things are blooming to help with fire blight lesson i learned and i'll try to do better next year but coming on down we got another asian pear here i know this one is korean giant because the the way it grows korean giants want to grow straight up so everything's just going just and it's really really hard to train this one so you want to do it when the limbs are uh, uh, small because those limbs are going to go just just like this it's just the growth habit of this asian pear now my other two were hatsui and shinko but i'm not for sure which one's which i'd have to go back and look at my notes now coming on down here these are our persimmons now these are of asian variety called fuyu these guys aren't stringent now if you've ever had a wild persimmon out in the wild and that sucker wasn't ripe it would literally turn your mouth inside out it like it's like your mouth just instantly goes extremely dry these type will not do that no matter what stage you pick that persimmon and you were to eat it you're not going to get that you're not going to get it with this one and these persimmons really get big really 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 big and the seed in it is not that large versus kind of a wild or native persimmon where you have to wait till it gets really really mushy so it don't turn you inside out and it's a lot of seed in there so you don't get much meat not with these guys love them if you're not growing a asian style persimmon you may want to check that out and add it to your garden but as you can see we are growing these the same way on the trellis system and y'all these guys have just launched in the last several months around fall and early spring they were about this size tree here or smaller and they have just gone crazy since it's warmed up i mean look how long these limbs are here i mean it has really 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 taken off and i just noticed something y'all look right here that is our first persimmon right there now <laughs> that's pretty awesome now as we're coming on down this first row my next two trees are my european pears and i got a moon glow and i got a warren these guys are this one's kind of new i planted this one in the fall so it's doing okay and the warren pear is doing okay uh they they this this drought we have is kind of been taking a toll a little bit on the uh fruit orchard some plants are handling it way better than others the european pears are struggling just a little bit but compared to these persimmons who are just thriving 
thriving in this weather right now. All right, so this second row right here, this is one that I'm been just ecstatic about. Uh, this is our apple row, and the apple trees for the most part have been just rocking. We actually got some apples this year, not many, but we did get some, and they were absolutely delicious. I'm not gonna lie, so good. But this only being like year one and a half, two years, I'm not expecting or wasn't expecting a lot of fruit off my trees. I'm thinking somewhere around year four is when we're really gonna start seeing some fruits of our labor. But on these apple trees, you can really, 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 really tell how this trellis system works because it is just almost picture perfect in my opinion. You can see this first apple tree right here. I mean, it is really, really doing so well. Um, you can see the branching at two foot. We got a side branch going this way and one going this way. And then at four foot, you can see the branch going this way and then the branch going that way. And then at six foot, the same thing and then in here which i need to clip this one off right here but in here we're just trying to keep it clean we don't want any more side branching nowhere else so you may be asking okay i understand the side branching i understand that that part i get but what about these branches that are coming up all right so what i'm doing with these guys as you can see right here i'm keeping these guys cut below the next cable up but coming on down the apple line but this one right here i want to show you this one got fire blight early in the year and i caught it in time and i cut it off right here i had a little branch here so this is going to be my new side branch and the tree's perfectly healthy i saved it because the fire blight didn't come down and get into the main trunk but you can see the apple trees are just doing so well looking great I know which one this one is because I planted it in the fall. This is the Arkansas Black, which is a heirloom variety. And it is somewhat fire blight resistant, believe it or not. But looking wonderful. I know which one this one is because this is a newer one too. This is a Cumberland Spur. So this is an Alabama apple tree called the Cumberland Spur. Beautiful, beautiful and delicious apple. And as we come on down here, this gorgeous tree, I love the way this tree looks. This is a crab apple. This is a native crab apple to our area. And this crab apple serves many, many, many purposes. Number one, I love crab apples. I do. I love their tartness. I love them. I know that makes great jelly, so we can do that down the road. But I love crab apples. Of course, it, this will give birds something to eat. We don't mind sharing with the birds. Another reason I love this crab apple is this crab apple will be loaded with blooms. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous when it blooms. I mean gorgeous. And what that'll do is, is that's going to attract bees and pollinators. And the bees are going to love this when it goes in full bloom. And it is beautiful, y'all. If you've never seen a crab apple... It's kind of like a cherry tree, sort of the way it blooms. They're just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. But the main reason I got this crab apple is that it can cross-pollinate my pears and my apples. And also, if you notice, we got at least two of everything, right? Of course, I got more than two apples, but I got at least two apples. Um, I, I'm down to two Asian pear trees. I did have three, but two's okay. And if you notice, I got two European pears. So everything has got what it needs to cross-pollinate. And also, some pears and apples can cross-pollinate. And with my trees being so close together and growing on this trellis system, I shouldn't have any issues with pollination, especially with the honeybees here. Now, y'all, this next row is near and dear to my heart because I am a huge fig fan i love figs love them but i thought i had lost all my figs we had that flash freeze in december and generally my figs are okay they're typically okay they're deciduous they're gonna lose all their leaves and they go dormant in the winter and then when the springtime comes they start putting on their leaves and they start growing 
My figs got leveled to the ground. There was nothing except dead sticks. I thought all my figs were completely dead. I really, really did. It wasn't, oh man, it was, man, y'all, it was probably uh, several, 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 several weeks later, if not two months later, that I realized that I didn't lose my figs. I started seeing some little green shoots come up. And y'all, look how big they are now. We're talking not very long of time. We're talking spring to now, and look. These figs are taller than I am. My figs are kind of, they got kind of stunted. Uh, if they hadn't have been bit by that crazy freeze we have, because we generally don't have temperatures that cold here, this fig would be way bigger. The trunks would be way bigger, and it would produce a lot more figs. And what's happened is, is this knocked our figs back like 30 or 45 days. So our fig production is 30 to 45 days late. We should be in full-fledged, or really on the tail end of fig season for the most part. Now there's some varieties that are later than others, and I'll show you one in just a minute. Out of all that, these guys have a lot of figs on them and they're starting to turn ripe. Y'all can see we got figs here. You can see that one's not quite ripe yet. So look right down here. Oh yeah, look at here. There's a good one right there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So good, y'all. Now our first few figs here are LSU purples. Look at there. I can't stop eating them, y'all. But I did lose this one with that freeze. This one didn't come back. And this is my LSU black. Now you see how this looks right here? This is how all my figs looked a few months ago. Just like that. Now coming on down, this was my most productive fig last year. This is the Auroric fig. Oh, I may have one ready. That's not quite ready yet. This is the Auroric fig. This is a fig that will be similar to your grandmother Celeste, but it's, it's really this Aurora fig is an improved Celeste, which was one that your grandmother would have grown in her yard along with her brown turkey fig. Very, very, very productive fig right here. But this one right here is by far my favorite fig. And this one is green isha it has a green fig that has a strawberry red center and the flavor is unbelievable it is so good i can't explain it but if you ever come across a green isha i would buy it and plant it these are just delicious and it's a little later fig as i was talking about earlier this fig will produce later in the season uh, I don't see any that are ready yet, but this fig here is so good that most of you guys know that Brooke does not like fresh figs. She loves freeze-dried figs, but she doesn't love fresh figs. She will eat every one of these green Esha figs that I pick. That's how good they are. She loves them. Mary Carl loves them. This is our favorite fig right here. But there's one fig that I'm extremely excited about that might be better than this one this one's called colonel Littman's black cross and this fig is supposed to be the cat's pajamas so i cannot wait for this fig to get big and start putting on some fruit i will tell you guys this i thought i lost this fig it took a long time for this one to come back which it did i'm so glad that this fig did not die in that flash freeze we had in December. My last fig here, this is one, another one I'm excited about. This is a new one we planted in the fall of last year. And this is the Alma fig. What's cool about this fig is this fig will give you two seasons, two fruitings. It's gonna give you an earlier one, then it's gonna give you a later one. Two seasons, more figs. I'm not complaining y'all at all. Now, if I had one row that I was just a little disappointed in, it would be my blueberry row. I lost a lot of blueberries from the weather. I lost, gosh, I'd have to count, several from the flash freeze because I had planted those guys in the fall. And I lost some established ones in the flash freeze. And I've lost a couple from this crazy hot drought we've had this year and continue on last year too. So my blueberries are not doing as well as I had hoped mainly because 
I got super acidic soil here. So when I tell another gardener that I have super acidic soil almost every single time, they say, oh, that means you can grow blueberries because blueberries love acidic soil. All my other plants here besides the blueberries, I had to amend the soil with some lime. But the blueberries, I didn't do that with. So just the blueberry row has been a little disappointing to me because I was hoping that, you know, I got the perfect soil condition here that the blueberries were gonna take off. Some have, but not like I thought. You see these first two blueberry bushes I lost these blueberry bushes are doing pretty good. I need to prune them a little bit, but they're doing pretty good. This blueberry bush is doing okay. Now, this is one that I got that um, that Tracy from Just Dig It Farm had gifted me. And I had some others here. You can see I lost these. She gifted me. This one I thought was gone, but I went to pull it up, and then I saw some green right there, y'all. So it's not gone yet, but the, the hot weather has gotten this one. The hot weather has put a stress on this one. Look at how stressed these guys are. I got irrigation in here, but even though, you know, where you run the drip irrigation, some of these guys are getting really, really stressed out. We had some blueberries this year, but not a whole lot. And for obvious reasons, my bushes aren't that big, but these are doing pretty good. If the rest of them catch up with these guys, then I think we're gonna be okay. So this row right here, you guys know what this row is. This was probably the last fruit orchard video I did was on the blackberries. But they look a little different than <laughs> when I showed them to you guys because we were actually harvesting blackberries. And we harvested ooh hoodles, I mean gallons upon gallons of blackberries. But now blackberry season's over. And since blackberry season's over, this is my new growth for next year. So I just let it go. I haven't been pruning it because of the blackberries. Let me show you. I'm growing these guys on a trellis system, much like the apples, the pears, and the persimmons. I said this is a two wire system and it's basically two foot and four foot. And you could probably see a good one right here. I'll have two main canes from one plant. One cane's gonna go to that bottom wire and I cut it off. The second cane comes to the second wire. You can see I cut it off right there and that causes it to branch. So we got a side branch going down this way and we got a side branch going down this way. And I'll do the same thing on that bottom wire. And y'all, if you saw my video, this blackberry patch went crazy. We had blackberries galore. We had so many blackberries. I cannot tell you how many blackberries we had. And that was just basically two branches. All this is gonna be cut back to two branches and it's just unreal. Because what happens is, just like the fruit trees, all of that blackberry energy is being forced into just only a bottom row and a top row. So basically, four side branches. Two main canes, four side branches. That forces all of that energy just in those two canes and those four side branches and it will load up with blackberries. Not only with loaded with blackberries, and that's what's awesome about this system, but when you when you go to harvest, I'm just like this, picking blackberries, just like this, y'all. I'm not reaching in all this picking blackberries. Look at this. I'm not reaching in all this. So it's gonna save my arm from getting cut up. Plus, how many blackberries are you gonna miss when you got all this? And these blackberries here are Kiowa blackberries. Now, petals from the past, Dr. Powell and Jason Powell. This is their go-to blackberry. This is their favorite blackberry. But I wanted to change up and do something just a little bit different with blackberries. So halfway down, I planted a different variety. Now this is a thornless variety called Nanchez. I'm going to trellis it the same way when it cools off. And it's going to be like a little later. This Kiowa blackberry is fairly early. So it's going to extend my growing season for next year. And I was super excited about these. And I'll grow these guys the exact same way that we did the cowboys. These next two rows, I'm super excited about. These are, actually these next four rows we're gonna get into are the ones that we just created last fall. So these are newer beds or newer rows in the fruit orchard. And these are rocking and rolling. That's all I can say. 
The next two rows that you see are going to be musky dines. Now musky dines are a native grape here in the south. And to me they're, they're quite a bit different than your normal grape. A table grape or a grape like you would get from the grocery store. They got this ooey gooey center in it. And the seeds are kind of in the middle of this gooey center. And so when you put one in your mouth you kind of have to push that out and then force the seeds out then you'll spit the seeds out and a lot of people will spit the skin out but i like the skin and i'll eat the whole thing at that point the the musky dine is really a staple here in the south and y'all i have no irrigation on these guys and look how they're just thriving they are thriving now these guys will be put on a trellis system and we're going to wait till it gets cool or cool off when we do that. Now on the musky dines, I got male vines and I got female vines. But I am covered. I got enough male and females here that I will have no issues with pollination. So always ask your nursery. And you guys see all this? This will be cut down to just two vines on each plant. And these guys are going to grow. You can see it. They're 10. No, they're 20 foot apart, I believe. They're not 10 foot apart. I think they're 20 foot apart. They're the most spaced out plants I got here on the farm, I can tell you that. But I want to show you guys something right here. Because this one right here is actually producing them. Right there. Right there. And let me show you what one of these look like. There it is. See, it's got that ooey gooey center. And then the seeds are in the middle. Right there. And so you would push those seeds out. And then eat it away they're so good now musky dines are near and dear to my heart because this one brings back so many so so many childhood memories uh my grandfather our granddaddy had several musky dines he had one at his house at the river he had a little cabin at the river and he had one at his house in town if i feel like Everybody's grandparents had musky dime vines in the backyard on some type of trellis system. And I just remember a kid going back there and eating to my belly hurt. Now, my grandparents grew them because they made jelly out of them. Musky dime jelly is delicious. And that's probably what your grandparents did as well. Now, this next row is exciting. Because this is bunching grapes now the musky dine is a native grape these are bunching grapes so these grapes right here are going to look similar to what you're used to seeing when you think of a grape that cluster of grapes the musky dines don't grow like that they don't grow in those huge clusters of uh, grapes that are shaped like a triangle i've always been told that we have a hard time growing these type of grapes here table grapes uh, because it doesn't get cold enough here. We don't have enough chill hours. But here recently, petals from the past is starting to add some that we can grow. And this first one is extremely special. Now, y'all, this grape right here is special. This one is called Foxy Lottie. And this grape was discovered in a lady's backyard. And it's named after her in Tuskegee, Alabama. Now this grape is extremely similar to a Concord grape, a very common grape that's grown around the United States, but we have a hard time growing Concord grapes because it doesn't get cold enough. But this grape here does extremely well in our area. Now, the theory or the myth or the, the hearsay or the wives tale or the legend of how this grape came about is that they think that someone was eating Concord grapes and spit the seeds out in the backyard and those grapes rooted and created a plant. That plant either had a mutation or it evolved to handle our climate. And that's how Foxy Lottie came about. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that is the tale on how this grape maybe came about. But regardless, I am happy that they found this grape in this lady's backyard. <laughs> but 
But these guys too would be grown on a trellis system. Let's see if I can find some. I may not see any yet. Thought I may see some bunching, but I don't. But these guys would be grown on a trellis. I lost one in the flash freeze. Actually lost two in the flash freeze. That's okay. But we will have us some bunching grapes. Aren't they beautiful? These plants are just gorgeous. Now we're on the last row. This is probably Mary Carl's favorite row, or one she's most excited about. And that's because we're growing kiwi on this row. And believe it or not, here in zone 8A, we can grow kiwis. This variety here is a self-pollinating variety. It is called Isaiah. And it too will be grown on a trellis system. But a trellis system on the kiwis has to be pretty beefed up because these vines are going to get huge. I mean, they, they could get like this. Really, really big vines, and it's going to go crazy. So we got to have a beefed up trellis system on this, similar to like a um, clothesline, except just really, really beefed up. Now, kiwis, typically you need a male and a female, but these guys are self-pollinating, so I don't need that. So always check with your nursery when you're buying plants like this and to make sure that you're getting a self-pollinating variety or that you're getting two that can pollinate each other. There's nothing worse than buying a plant that you're so excited about and it never does anything because you really didn't know. Some of y'all have asked how come you're not growing peach trees, how come you're not growing plum trees. Those are all stone fruit. Um, I kind of backed off on stone fruit because Generally, they are a little bit harder to grow, and I wanted to get some some experience under my belt before I tackled that, but we got plenty of room for expansion, so the fruit orchard can just keep going on around as far as we want. So what you see here may not be the end of the fruit orchard. I hope not. I love the fruit orchard. <laughs> Y'all, I hope this answers a lot of you guys' questions about the fruit orchard. And I hope this gives you guys an idea of where we're at now in the fruit orchard. And I got a playlist with everything we've done in this fruit orchard. And for some of you guys that may want a refresher or missed any of those videos, I'll put a link to that playlist in this video description. And I'll pin a comment on YouTube and put it in the comments over there on YouTube. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. I know this wasn't a typical vlog that we normally do, but I've had so many of you guys wanting to know about the fruit orchard. I thought, well, I was going to take a little break and give you guys a tour of the fruit orchard, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. As always, y'all be good. Mm -hmm.